welcome to my channel in this video we are going to discuss perceptron in particular we are going to discuss perceptron learning algorithms in previous video we have discussed briefly the artificial neurons how they evolved over times from maculophytes model then perceptron adaline and today's neuron this video we are going to discuss perceptron in detail so this is part 2 in that connection so let us discuss perceptron learning algorithms now it said that perceptron this is the first model that was proposed in 1958 by Rosenblatt for this artificial neurons here the weights are adjustable that is the first time it was introduced as you see in maculophytes model the weights are not adjustable so in that connection this model is the first model where we will find some learning rules so using certain rule that is called perceptron perceptron rule or perceptron algorithm using that we can adjust these weights w0 w1 up to wn to get one desired output y for certain input x1 to xn right so here these are the weights w0 w1 w2 up to wn now we will understand we will try to understand this model in detail today and we will also find out the perceptron rule here so let us discuss this model first so first stage this stage is the linear combiner so here this output j or g is simply linear combination of these inputs so here the first one i have considered the one and then actual inputs x1 x2 x3 up to xn so one is multiplied with w0 this part and then x1 w1 x2 w2 all the products are there and then we will find we will consider one addition simply summation here okay so this is called linear combiner now here this one we can consider as x0 okay we may consider one input as well but uh, where this input value is always one okay so actually this w0 is corresponding to one bias and we have discussed this thing in my previous lecture in detail so if we introduce bias in this form then later on whenever we will use one thistle operator here the in that case in for this hard thistle operator the thistle value will be around 0 okay so to get the thistle value around 0 we will include one weight coefficient w dot in this input side okay and then we can consider this thistle value around 0 only okay this is the concept that we have discussed in detail in previous lectures okay so if you have any confusion please go through this one now uh, we have replaced this one by one uh, input symbol x0 so with certain intention that so we will get all the product in similar form that it, this is first term is x0 y0 w0 x1 w1 x2 w2 like that in that way if you write then we can rearrange this thing in this form where the first one is w0 w1 w2 up to wn this is a row vector containing all the weights then this is a column vector containing all the inputs x0 x1 x2 up to xn now to this inputs you see x0 is always one and rest are actual inputs right so this weights vectors 
we'll simply write w underscore so we'll put one underscore to indicate that it's a vector okay so this one i have considered w underscore is a column vector containing w0 w1 up to wn and this is called weight vector and similarly this one this x underscore will consider x0 x1 up to xn this column vector and these are generally called feature vector or signal vector okay and remember x0 is not actual signal okay or actual features so this is always one so sometimes we will consider only x1 to xn as a feature vector and sometimes we will consider this including this x0 and x1 all those things as a feature vector so especially when we will discuss the algorithm we will consider all the elements starting from x0 to xn as a feature vector okay so please don't be confused so if i consider these two coulomb vectors then first row vector we can write the transpose of this coulomb vector so it is w1 transpose and second one is simply x1 so basically it is a product dot product of these two vector w and x okay so this is the inner product of these two vector w and x so we can write in this form so this is the output of this g right so g is considered as this way dot product between w and x so you know that it is a commutative so we can write w transpose x or x transpose w the same meaning then this y is actually the output after taking hard threshold operator so this is a hard threshold operator so it is having two state either plus 1 or minus 1 and it will have a plus 1 when so you see this value is either plus 1 or minus 1 and this whole value is around 0 so when this value w transpose x means this g if it is more than 0 equal to 0 then we will assign it as y as 1 otherwise it is minus 1 means w transpose x if it is negative then it is minus 1 okay so output y is having two states either plus 1 or minus 1 now we have the outputs d that is d is the desired output for the certain inputs x1 to xn okay and we can compare these two d and y then we will get the error signal e and using this error signal we can tune this weights w1 to wn so that we, this y value will be close to d or exactly we can say that y should match with d exactly because d is also having two states either 1 and minus 1 similarly y is also having two states 1 and minus 1 so either they will match or they will there will be some mismatch okay so one ma major application is that using this perceptron model we can classify binary and linearly separable classes so binary means two classes if we have two classes and if they are linearly separable then we can use perceptron to classify that one okay and it could be shown later that if it is linearly separable obviously perceptron algorithm will work and means it can classify it correctly with finite number of iterations that will be discussed later now i am going to give you one example of this binary classification problem very simple example we will consider let us consider these things so this is the height and weight i'll consider these are two features height and weight and we'll consider one category a person and two categories we'll consider these are adult and kids okay only binary okay either it could be adult or kid two category right so based on these two features we want to classify this one 
So we have considered few data here. So first data it says that the height is five feet. So this is in the under feet. Unit is feet, and weight is kg. Okay. So five feet and fifty one kg kilogram. Then we will consider that is as adult. Similarly, six feet and forty nine it's adult. Three feet forty it's a kid. Four fifty five it's a kid. 5.545 it's adult 3.520 kids 4.560 adult and 4.525 is kid so now you, you can notice here this 4.5 4.5 so height is same but weight i have considered 60 that is for adult and for one kid the weight is supposed 25 so same height we can have different weight but this kind of data is all is given. Suppose, then can we separate these two category using perception model? Okay. So as we are having only two category, so first we will assign the class value. We will assign these things adult for plus one and kid for minus one. So we replace whenever they say adult, it, it is written by plus one and kids are minus one right okay now left side you see this axis is height this axis is weight so we have plotted all the points so this point 551 this is a five and this is 51 so this could be the points okay and then 649 649 could be these things Okay, I think this is the five, five and fifty-one, and this is your six forty-nine. So five comma fifty-one, and this is your six comma forty-nine, right? Similarly, this three forty I have considered here. This one, and all the other points I have considered here. Okay, so this green circle I have considered for kids. And the cross, red cross, I have considered for adult. But here, the magnitude wise, this star, this cross points are nothing but magnitude wise, it is plus one. And circle, its value is becoming minus one. That we have assigned. Okay. Now, we can fit one straight line in between these two classes. To segregate these two classes, we can place one straight line. And if we can place one straight line to separate these two classes perfectly, then only it is called linearly separable. Okay. So for 2D, one line we'll consider, and for higher dimensional, we'll consider this is on a hyperplane. So if you can classify one higher dimensional binary classes, okay, using one hyperplane then only it will be called bind this is called simply separable okay using this linearly separable okay so this is the perception model so we need to find this w0 w1 w2 all those things okay so that these two classes are separable using one hyperplane so in this case we have only two features so this is becoming one straight line in two dimensional okay so in particular you see for this example where x1 will consider one feature these features that is for height and x2 another feature that is for weight so we are having only these two features x1 and x2 okay and one constant that is one there is fine so Exactly, we are having these three w0, w1, and w2. These three unknown coefficients we need to find out. Okay, and using these three, we need to make one straight line equations. So, equations is obviously w0 plus w1 times x1 plus w2 times x2, and this value is equal to 0. Then, this is called a one equation of straight line. and so we need to find out this w0 w1 w2 values this is the target 
okay now it is not that only one straight line we can make it sometimes we can make more than one straight lines then also we can uh, have two separate classes okay so meaning is that it is not one unique solutions we can have different kind of solutions different weights values w set of these weights w0 w1 w2 okay, they can have different values then also it will it may work so we need to find out one such solution any one such solution then it is done okay so task is how to find out one such solution w0 w1 w2 so that these two classes are perfectly separable so you see right side i have considered all classes so you can understand that if one point on this line right side of this line if its value is positive then all the other points on this right side they will also have positive values okay that is granted so similarly if this point is having so positive means i am saying that this point value at this point if i replace this x1 x2 here so this value w0 w1 x1 w2 x2 its value is positive for this point at this point at this point this value is again positive okay similarly all these four points this value should be negative okay now we will try to understand perception rule or algorithm so before that try to understand this data set so i have said that x1 x2 x3 up to xn these are actually features so if they are there are n such features we will call it n dimensional feature vector this is x vector and corresponding desired one or target one is d so d is called desired output or target output for this feature set okay i need to get this d target output and one thing that we have already said it is two classes so d could be either plus one or minus one in this case right so uh, we can have several such data so one data could be x1 underscore d1 remember x1 underscore is the n dimensional features so first n dimensional feature and that corresponding target that is d1 so this is one data point similarly x2 d2 another data point as yes, we can have n such data point okay so we want to match all those things no so we want to find out w0 w1 up to wn such that all the data points are satisfied means whenever we will apply x1 underscore means x1 feature vector will get y that is same as d1 similarly whenever we will apply x2 we should get y as d2 like that it should match it perfectly then we will say it is perfectly classified okay now you know that binary classes means dj should be so any any j if j is 1 to m there are m data points so dj can take only two states either plus one and minus one so for that example already you see you have seen that we have shown that there are eight points we have considered the four points for adult and four points for kids okay now you see uh, from this one this 551 i have written here so x1 is 5 x2 is 51 and corresponding this category is adult means for plus 1 so target is plus 1 so this is my feature vector 551 and corresponding target is plus 1 next one is 649 and target is plus 1 next one is 340 and target is minus 1 340 minus 1 like that so similarly we will get all such eight data points that you can notice so last two you see this 4.560 and plus 1 4.560 and plus 1 this is 4.525 
and the target is minus one, last one. So these are eight data points, right? Now we'll use percept and algorithm to adjust these weights. So one thing I can say right now, the percept and algorithm is similar to the stochastic gradient descent approach. Meaning is that stochastic I have discussed in previous lectures. In stochastic gradient descent, the cost function is designed with respect to only one sample, one data. Okay, so every iteration it will consider only one data and based on that data we will try to optimize certain things. Okay, so meaning is that these adjustments will be sequential. So all data will be considered one by one. So first we will consider only this one, then we will try to adjust this weight. Again next time we will consider next data and again we will try to adjust further. So sequentially, we'll move from one to last one. And at the end, we'll see whether all the, at the end, whatever result we'll get, means weight vectors, W0 to Wn, these values, whether this weight vector can classify all the data point successfully or not. If it can classify correctly all the data points, then we can stop. Otherwise, again, we'll repeat it. So one round may not be sufficient, okay? This is one round. If you start from here, then this one, then this one, and we'll go to these points after this one, okay? Then we'll see whether it can classify all the points correctly or not. If it is, it cannot classify correctly, then again, we should consider this data point again, okay? So in this way, we'll consider in a iterative way. Right? And we'll continue this process until it can classify all the data points correctly. Then only we can stop. Right? So in this percept and rhythms, we'll use that. That is the stopping criteria. Right. So what is the percept and algorithm then? And it says that it's very simple algorithm. Very, very simple algorithm. So the first line, it says that this y is the output of the hard tissue operator and d is you know target values if y and d these two are same meaning is that for this data it is correctly classified okay so what is the target we have achieved the target because y is becoming d then obviously there is no need to update our weight okay so we won't modify the current weight will keep as it is, right? So if Y is matching with D, and if Y is less than D, then W is reflected by W plus alpha times X vector. So here alpha is on learning factors, or learning rate, and sometimes in, we will be also calling step size, okay? So this W plus alpha x that is your current value of w okay after this update now and if y is more than d then actually alpha x vector is subtracted from the w then we'll get our update values w so it is very simple either alpha times x is added or subtracted it is added when output is less than target and it is subtracted when output is more than target. Okay. Now you see here one case is so this, as you know, that D it can have only two values, one and minus one. And Y is also having two values, one and minus one, no others. Okay. So this Y less than D means obviously it is for y is less than so y should be minus one and d should be one that is only one choice okay similarly here y is more than d so y should be plus one and d should be minus one that's all okay 
So these two lines we can combine simply with respect to one d vectors. So in the first equations, this one is valid for d equal to one, and second one, this is d equal to minus one. Okay. So when d equal to one, it is added. When d equal to minus one, it is subtracted. So why not? We'll simplify this thing as w plus d times alpha into x because in this first case is when d equal to 1 it is simply added and when d equal to minus 1 it will be subtracted okay so we can combine these two to these two using this thing only that it is alpha and we will introduce this d into x you see when d is 1 it is added when d is minus 1 it is subtracted that's simple right so Rosenblatt use the alpha equal to one only in his experiments. Okay, so he use alpha equal to one, then w equal to w plus d into x. And you see this alpha value one. In this case, Rosen, uh, this Farsen trial algorithm, it is converging. So he has shown that it will converge surely if it is linearly separable. Okay. But in getting descent, you will see you have seen that the step size alpha is too large. Okay, so if we consider some cost function like error square, okay, so be careful. Now, so you see uh, exactly this is our task. We have data points, we need to find out one straight line. Which will separate these two classes perfectly and these are the data sets okay and we have only one update equations that is w equals to w plus dx and whenever there is a misclassification and if there is no misclassification there is no change in weight that's all that is very simple algorithm and initial value you can start with any any one so don't consider all zeros then what will happen if you consider all zeros then this value will become zero for any points then there will be some confusion maybe some may have some confusion though we have considered that if it is equal to zero or more than zero then it is one we have defined that that way but again it is better to start with some non-zero values here okay so first w zero i can have some non-zero values like one and rest we can put it zeros that is fine Okay, so any we can put also minus one, doesn't matter, or 0.5, anything, not necessarily integers. And our more important thing is that here the inputs x1, x2, these are not binary. It can take any values. Okay, it is unlike to Colpitt's algorithm. Okay, McClumpitt's algorithms. Now, I want to highlight one point here before going to discuss algorithm in detail. So people generally getting confused uh, in state line, simply understanding in state line only. So can you imagine what I am going to discuss? So you see, this is one x1 axis. This is x2 axis. I have done one state line. And suppose this straight line equation is w0, w plus w1x1 plus w2x2 equal to 0. Okay, so the two variables x1, x2, and these are some values w0, w1, w2, this they are provided. So obviously it will give you one equation. Okay, now for this one, can you say that its right side points? this side points will give you positive value for this function w0 plus w1x1 w2x2 and this side negative is it always correct okay for this kind of straight line i'll say it's not always correct okay you need to check check it properly 
So it depends on this coefficients W0, W1 and W2. So I'll give you one example. Consider G equals to, so this is a function W0 plus W1x1 plus W2x2. Now I'll take one example. Suppose G1 is 6 minus 3x1 plus 2x2. And G2 is minus 6 plus 3x1 minus 2x2. So can you notice this too? Okay. So you see all the elements are negative of each other. So okay. here I've considered plus 6 and minus 6, minus 3 plus 3 plus 2 minus 2 like that. Intensely I have considered in that way. Okay. Let us see. So for these two points, I want to find out the straight line and these two regions. Okay. So first I will make G1 equals to 0. Then only I will get one equation. Right. So if I put this is equal to 0, 6 minus 3x1 plus 2x2 equals to 0. So if you simplify it, what you will get? So this 2x2 2 2 equals to, this is your 3x1 minus 6. I think it is correct. So x2, we can divide this 2 right side. So 3 by 2x1 and 6 by 2 is 3. It's minus 3. Very simple. And this is similar to our known form y equals to mx plus c the straight line equation where m is the slope and c is the cut point in y axis okay so if we want to draw this this equations okay what we'll do so first we'll consider this c here c equal to minus 3 so in y axis it will cut this this straight line will cut in y axis at minus 3 that is a minus 3 so this this is your c and the slope m equals to here is 3 by 2. Okay, it's a positive slope, means it's growing. It's increasing functions. From this one, it's increasing function. And slope is more than 1, means more than 45 degree. This angle is more than 45 degree. Anyway, so this is one straight line. Now for this straight line, we are having two regions. This is one side region, and this is another region. Okay, it will separate these two regions. So for this Z1, Okay, so if I consider these points, this region, whether in this region the values are positive or negative. Okay, that we want to understand. Similarly, in this region also we want to understand the values. So how to get that one? One very easy way is that if we know the our origin, what is our origin? Now in this case, origin is on the left side, zero comma zero. From this figure, it is very clear. So we can put this these values. Okay, we can put the x x1 equal to zero and x2 equal to zero in z1. Okay. So if I put this one, what will get? G1 equals to six minus three into zero plus two into zero means six. So it is positive. So this point, this point, the value is positive. It's implied that this side, all the points are positive. Okay, be careful. Its left side is positive. This equation minus this is plus 6 minus 3x1 plus 2x2 equal to 0. These equations will separate these two region and where the left side region I am saying that it is negative. Okay, everywhere you will get negative values. Sorry, left side is positive values. We have got 6, it is a positive values. All are positives right so obviously then right side should have negative values opposite only okay now consider z2 this one so g2 equals to 0 we put it then this 2x2 i can find equals to again minus 6 plus 3x1 then again we can find x2 equals 3 by 2x1 minus 3 now can you notice this this one and this one they are exactly same okay because we have equated with zero and g2 is simply negative of g1 so if i put it zero we'll get the same solutions same set of equations okay so it will indicate the same straight line so this function will indicate the same straight line these things right 
However, you can check that now origin, you have put the origin 0, 0. So 0, 0 here, then value will be negative here, means this one is having negative value. So that left side is negative for G2 and right side will be positive. Okay, so this is one important point I want to make. So don't consider that one straight line is right side is always positive. No, you need to consider. Okay, now suppose the origin is very difficult to understand in which side. Just I have drawn one thing, one line. I don't know where is the origin. Okay, then it's difficult to see whether left side or right side. So one equation, simply one equation is given. We are not we are drawing the straight line arbitrarily. Even I want to understand from the equation only which side is positive and which side is negative. So what I will do? So one thing that from the straight line, now consider one axis. How is this x1 axis? Obviously x1 axis infinity is on right side here for the straight line. That is very easily we can understand from this figure. Means x1 infinity and x2 0 if I put then what will happen okay so the x2 0 means we can ignore this part and x1 infinity means obviously as it is negative it will become minus infinity and this we can ignore it whatever coefficient is there so this coefficient if this coefficient is negative so now obviously this infinity x1 infinity comma 0 x to 0, that point will have negative value. It's 100 percent sure. So if you can understand that axis, then obviously you will say easily you can say that from these points only, we can say that this is negative side. Similarly, x2, this positive y axis, okay, that is its left side and it is positive value, thus its value is positive. Okay, this is just very, very simple logic you can use it to understand which side is positive and which side is negative. Okay, so we'll move ahead. Now, next one, we'll try to understand this perceptron algorithm from gradient descent concept. Is it possible to connect somehow the gradient descent algorithm to understand this perceptron algorithms? Okay. Now, we have discussed gradient descent algorithm in detail in my previous lectures. So, uh, if you have not gone through, I will request all of you to go through this, those videos first, then try to understand this part. Now, the first algorithm says that this thing, whenever there is a mismatch, then only there will be update. W is replaced by W plus alpha into T into X vector. And when there is no mismatch, there is no update means w equals to w okay and alpha generally will consider within 0 to 1 right now gradient descent algorithm now what it says now gradient descent algorithm especially stochastic descent stochastic gradient descent means we need to find out consider one cost function g of w with one sample Okay, and the cost function is always positive. It's the cost functions. Okay, so it should be always positive if you want to minimize the cost value. Okay, so in the update rule is very simple wk plus 1 will be wk minus eta times del j del w. So this is the partial derivative. Of this cost functions with respect to w and eta is the learning rate so negative part negative value of this gradient this is called gradient is added after multiplying eta with this previous one will get new update that is a simple algorithms okay now we want to connect this thing we want to consider this one to get this update it's also very similar but how to get this correction terms plus alpha times d into x okay and what type of cost functions we should consider that we'll be discussing okay now consider the current sample as xj and dg okay and cost function what are the cost functions we'll consider 
right? Now this is our perceptron algorithm, perceptron network, or this model. Now for misclassification, suppose this sample is having some misclassifications. So whatever current weight is there, W vector, uh, it won't give you this desired output, dj. So yj is not same as same as dj. So we are assuming that dj is different from yj. Okay, there's a misclassifications, and then there would be some weight uh, update for that. Now, when we can have misclassifications? So I already have said that two cases we can get either dj equal to 1 that time yj equal to minus 1 or dj equal to minus 1 yj equal to 1 and you understand that what is over yj and yj is 1 this value is 1 when this is positive or equal to 0 okay and this is means what w transpose x vector okay w transpose xj if this value is positive, positive more than equal to 0, then output is 1. And if this value is negative, strictly negative, then it is minus 1. This is because of this hard dissolved operator. Right? Now, try to understand. We need to make one cost function, which is always positive. You cannot con consider one cost function with negative values. Okay? So, how to design our cost functions in this case? So can you see one point when dj equal to 1 and that time obviously yj equal to minus 1 and yj minus 1 means w transpose xj is negative. Okay, when dj equal to 1 in other words I can say w transpose xj is negative. So it is positive 1 it is negative and when dj equal to minus 1 that time w transpose xj is positive. Okay. So it's opposite sign. When dj is positive 1, w transpose xj is negative. And when dj is minus 1, w transpose xj is positive. So why not we'll multiply these two? Then see if I multiply these two, dj times w transpose xj, what will get? Because whenever this is positive, this is negative. When this is negative, this is positive, so product is always negative. Okay, so this product dj times w transpose xj is always negative for misclassification. Remember, this is true only for misclassification. Okay, so for, for both the cases, remember, for both the cases, so we can define one cost function j, jw as negative of this value i want to make it positive so minus sign of dj w transpose xj so this is positive always for misclassification and for correct classification obviously i will assign that cost is zero there is no cost associated it's zero cost minimum cost okay so if i consider the cost function in this way then if I use our Gaudian concept, will you get perceptual algorithm? But remember one thing, in our Gaudian descent algorithm, we have considered the cost functions as error square initially. So not to say that you have to consider only error square, we can consider a to the power 4, e to the power 4, e to the power 6 or even, or we can consider absolute value of e or absolute value of eq like that or even we can consider some other functions like entropy so we'll be discussing all those things all the possible cost functions for getting this algorithm okay so there uh, we have seen that uh, if we consider the batch process obviously in every iteration the performance is improved means error is reduced it is going towards the optimal points okay that is guaranteed. But this is not true for stochastic gradient descent. In stochastic gradient descent, for that sample, okay, we can have some improvement. But other samples, it may have some adverse effect. It can have. 
overall performance may not decrease monotonically mean performance cannot improve may not improve monotonically okay that you should keep in mind so we'll we'll be discussing this percept this stochastic gradient descent algorithm in detail in one lecture okay for time being you should keep that thing in mind that stochastic gradient descent algorithms will not give you a descent sense means every iteration it won't go in descent direction so this word descent is misnomers it's not correct for stochastic gradient descent algorithm okay you can't expect that every iteration the overall performance is improved not like that especially will show that towards steady state the performance will oscillate okay anyway we'll discuss those thing in detail later now consider this cost function now if you take gradient then if you adjust your weights based on this gradient descent algorithm then what you will get okay so this is the update rule wk plus 1 equals wk minus alpha times del j w okay and here you can notice one thing i have introduced here k not j okay because this index could be different because w vector is not always modified whenever there is some some misclassification then only it is modified i am saying that whenever there is a modification then only we will have another one okay wk to wk plus 1 otherwise it will remain there only okay so that index may be different from j and j is a, our current sample and you can notice that again one round it cannot get the may not get the success so we, we need to repeat the same samples again and again to get the uh, convergence thus there is no link between small k and small j okay so now if i take partial derivative of this one what you will get so if i take derivative of this one with this w will get minus dj into x j only that we can replace here so this one i can replace by minus dj into x j and here alpha is your learning rate so you see i replaced here so minus minus it is becoming plus so it's alpha times dj into xj so this is for misclassifications and if it is a correct classification then error is zero there's no update so this correction time is becoming zero is first the limit is zero so wk plus 1 will be equal to wk can you think you see this is exactly same as first and final algorithm so when there is a correct classification there is no update when there is a misclassification wk plus 1 should be replaced by wk plus alpha times dj into xj okay this was the things okay you see w is replaced by w times alpha into d into x that's all so you have understood this perceptual algorithm from gradient descent point of view so this is remember this is the corresponding cost functions we have designed okay however whenever it was proposed i uh, i think this connection was not there so the people have understood some connection with this gradient descent earlier the percent rule was designed in a ad hoc fashion so now we want to understand whether this cost function will can really converge or means really it will classify all the points correctly or not okay if these two classes are linearly separable that is one question okay so this is one big task we need to understand this algorithm in detail so we will work on that in the next video we will be discussing again this perceptual algorithm in detail we will see that how it is converging or for different classes if i define examples what is the performance of this algorithm so you want to study it neatly and we wish to also give the theoretical convergence analysis of this perceptual algorithm in detail okay so one thing you should keep in mind why we are discussing perceptual algorithm in detail because our objective is to learn 
very sophisticated algorithms or networks like deep learning networks okay you, you can consider cnn conversion neural network rnn several things okay and if you understand if you want to understand those network then obviously you need to understand the very basic algorithms and if you are not comfortable to understand this algorithm then i think you are not in current correct position to follow those algorithms okay so thus we are discussing perceptual algorithm in detail so that it will create say strong foundation to understand those sophisticated algorithms okay i hope uh, i have made some statement here why we are discussing the perceptual algorithm in detail Okay, so we'll continue our discussion in our next video, and we'll come back soon. So, if you like this video, then you may subscribe this channel to get the future videos, and please share this video to your friends. Okay, who may like this video as well. So, thank you very much for listening my video. We'll come back again. Thank you.